Hey, we're going to do some review of exponents. Exponents are numbers that look like this, where you have this large base number and the smaller exponent. And together, it's called a power. So again, we have number looks like this. It has the large base number, two, with this little smaller number as our exponent. So if we look at this number, we wouldn't read this as two little four. There's a very specific way that you, we read these numbers. So in reading this out loud, we would say two to the fourth power or two to the power of four, either would be acceptable. So you read the base number to the power of the exponent. So the base number we read first, and then we say to the power of, and then we read the exponent. So base, or two to the power of four, or two to the fourth power. Either way is acceptable. So to understand a little bit, a little refresher on how powers work, um, think back to elementary school when you first started learning multiplication. Multiplication was actually, used to be represented as repeated addition. So if you had two times four, it was really two plus two plus two plus two, right? Or four plus four. So you took one of the numbers and you repeatedly added it by the other number. So if I repeatedly added the number two, I would do it four times. If I repeatedly added the number four, I would do it two times, right? So multiplication is repeated addition. Well, an exponent is not repeated addition, basic exponent operations are represented as repeated multiplication. Okay, so just like multiplication is repeated addition, exponents are repeated multiplication. Look at an example. If I have four to the third power, okay, one very common mistake is that students will just multiply these numbers together. This is not the same as four times three. If I wanted four times three, I would write four times three. This is not a different way of writing a multiplication problem. It's very important that you remember that, especially if you know there may be a moment where you start to struggle like, is it four times three? Is it four plus? What is the four in the, th remember, if I wanted four times three, I would write four times three. You've seen all the ways to write four times three. This is not that. This is the base number being repeatedly multiplied by the, ex the exponent tells us how many times to multiply the four. So my base number is the number that's repeatedly multiplied. The exponent tells me how many times to do it. So again, the base number is what's repeatedly multiplied the exponent tells me how many times to do it. And we're going to cover some, you know, this, that statement in just a second. But right now, copy down this example or uh, look at this example. You already have it. And when I multiply those fours together, I get 64. So if we wanted to come up with a statement about how to write an exponent as a multiplication problem, my base is b, and my exponent is an n, let's say. This means b multiplied by itself n times. So b is the number that's multiplied 
n is number of times. Let's take a look at another example. 1 to the fourth power. Well, my base is the number that's repeatedly multiplied. 4 tells me how many times to do it. So I get 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. And that actually equals 1. Let's look at another example. 3 to the second power. My base number is the number that's repeatedly multiplied. The exponent tells me how many times. So the 3 gets repeatedly multiplied 2 times. 3 times 3. That equals 9. Now I want you to try. <clears throat> so 2 to the 5th power. Hit pause. See what you get. Now, this is not a time for you to just type 2 to the 5th power in a calculator and write a number down. What I want to see is I want to see this part, where you show me the repeated multiplication. I know you can click buttons on a calculator. I want to make sure that you understand the multiplication of these numbers, how it works, what it looks like. So I would want to see you have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 written. And then go ahead and put it in the calculator. And you should get 36. Actually, 32. Okay, let's look at this one. Don't let that one up there make you nervous. Just remember the process. I take the base number and I multiply it by itself however many times I have the exponent. So it's a 5 multiplied by itself once. I guess then we're not multiplying by ourselves. So another way that you can look at this is this exponent will tell you how many of that number you'll have. I only have 1. If I look back at this other, I had 5. Right, I had five twos. At our other example, I had two threes. So if we look at our current practice, I'm going to have one fives. My answer is five. Ten to the fourth power. Well, that means I'm going to have four tens being multiplied. Again, write out that multiplication, and I get 10,000. And now I really want you to try on your own, write out the repeated multiplication, and come up with your answer. So hit pause and do that. And all you end up with is 12. 12 mul tw I have one 12 is all I'm going to have. Next one. Hit pause. Try that on your own. You should get 10 times 10, which becomes 100. And our last one, hit pause. Try that. And you get 216. And again, use a calculator, that's fine. But I need to see this part. You just write 216, that's not good enough. I need to see that you understand that these powers create a multiplication problem. That's going to be very important, especially when we start getting to some advanced work. That's going to come in handy. I need to know that you can do that. 
Now there are a couple little tips and tricks, actually some things that came up during the you try that I want you to be aware of. Here's the first thing. I want you to take a look at the you try section and look at the powers that had an exponent of one. So take a look, focus on the powers that had an exponent of one. What pattern did you see? What happens when there's an exponent of one? Hopefully you looked at that and said, any number to the first power is itself. If you look at any of those examples with the power of one, exponent of one, the number is itself because that, that means I only have one of them. The next thing to take a look at it are the powers of 10. If you look at your powers of 10, the powers of 10 only contain ones and zeros. Okay, so the powers of 10 only contain ones and zeros. And honestly, if you look at the number of zeros, the exponent equals the number of zeros, right? So if you look at the exponent, if the exponent is four, we had four zeros. Now the last thing that I want to talk about that might be new to you, it may not be, is information about negatives. This is something to be very careful of. Read along with this with me. The base is only what is directly in front of the power. So the base is only what is directly in front of the power. So two to the third power. This two is directly in front of the, of the power, so it's the base. What this means is if I had three times two to the third power, three is not to the th third power, only the two, because the two is directly attached to the base. That's what we mean by this first statement. Okay. The reason this becomes important is when negatives start coming into play. So read along the second line with me. In order for a negative to be included, it must be grouped with parentheses. Here's where this happens. We have two different situations. that we're going to compare. In the first example, both of these have a negative and a two and a four as an exponent. But on the left-hand side, my negative doesn't have, there are no parentheses. On the right-hand side, there are parentheses, okay? These are two different problems, okay? Over here, because there are parentheses, that means the negative and the two are the base. On the left-hand side, the only number that's the base is the two. That negative is like some other number off to the side. It's just saying this is negative. The whole power is going to be negative is basically what that is saying. On the right-hand side, this is saying negative two is to the fourth power. Okay. This is probably the trickiest part of dealing with exponents. So what's going to happen on the left-hand side? It's basically like this. That negative has nothing to do with the two to the fourth power. So what I have here, <clears throat> Sorry about that. So what this is saying is two to the fourth power is its own little thing here. That negative has nothing to do with it. So my negative stays outside. I do my math in here and I get negative 16 as my answer. Now the second example that means negative two is to the fourth power. That means I have four negative twos that I'm multiplying.
negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is positive 16. In this case, you actually get two different answers. So it's very clear that these are not the same problem. This is going to be the number one thing that you've got to pay attention to with these negatives. And just think about this. The base is only what is directly in front of the exponent, unless there's some sort of grouping symbol. In this case, I'm grouping the negative and the 2 together. Negative and 2 are to the fourth power. In this case, just the 2 is to the fourth power. Let's look at another example. So if we look at these two comparisons, my negative is on its own. Remember, the 3 is the base. So this is what we have here. Becomes negative 9. On this side, negative 3 is the base because it's grouped with parentheses. That's positive 9. And that's it.